Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Trigger Warning. I am TT. I'm Kimo. Welcome back. I feel like we haven't seen each other. It's been a, a minute. It's been a minute. It feels that way, but it really hasn't. It's only been a week. No, it's longer than a week. For real? Yeah, because I didn't see you last week. It's longer than a week. Uh, yeah, but I felt like we saw each other the week before, though. I don't. Okay, maybe the week before, but I feel like, first of all, I feel like time is flying. Time is flying. It's already damn near the end of the year. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. I was Christmasless. Yeah, I had a crazy summer, man. I just and been so. How was busy. your summer? Was it okay? Because I feel like last summer was so much fun, and this summer feels like I want to slip my wrist. Well, this summer started off crazy because I had a death in my family. That's right. So I've been. So sorry. Yeah, That's, thank you. Yeah. I've been. Planning a funeral mm. and in and out of hospitals, and I just feel mentally and physically drained. If somebody would have told me, you know, when the clock struck 12 at, you know, January 1st, 2024, mm. that this would have been kind of the year I had, I wouldn't have believed them. But um, I'm working through it. It's been a very tough year. It's just been like, a wow. turning point for me, I think, in my life in general, to kind of put things in perspective. You know what getting I mean? deep today? Is that what's happening? I feel I, like it's. I just you feel, came in here. <laughs> you was like, I'm leaving these sunglasses on because I ain't got mo no makeup on. Sat no. down, and now it's like it's heavy, but yeah. it feels very heavy in the world. No, it's definitely very heavy in the world. Yeah, but I feel like everything that I've been through, kind of in this year year and a half. Just, you know, in my personal life, in my work profession, in my work profession, it's moving me in a different direction. And mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like embracing every moment of mm -hmm. it because it's so unexpected. And it's like, OK, God, what are these lessons that you're trying right. to teach me in these moments? Right. Um, and I'm humbled by them. You know, it's tough, but I'm humbled by them because it forces me to sit with myself. Yep. You know I'm saying I was having a tough week, too. Yeah. And I just, at some point, I was like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you just got to let it happen. Yeah, you know, one of the things that stuck out for me was acceptance with joy. Mm. That quote has been sticking with me for quite some time. It's just you have to accept everything that happens to you with joy mm -hmm. because nothing happens by mistake. Right. Everything that we go through in life is for our a purpose. Reason. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to learn, you got to find the lesson in it. And it's hard. Every time I, I keep thinking you're blessed. Like when I go through things, I'm like, you're blessed because I'm almost scared that something worse could happen. Yeah. Right. So it's like you go through something and then I'm like, but wait, it's not as bad as this, you know? Yeah. And so I try to find a lesson in it and be grateful. Yeah. For my health. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it makes us better human beings and it opens our eyes to see, okay, what what picture am I supposed to paint today? You know? What this else? Is heavy T T today. <laughs> this is saying. a heavy it's I'm just saying. Yeah. I see it. So, you know, I have that's why today I just came in. I'm, I have no nails, I have no makeup, I am stripped down Strip version down. of T T uh. normally. You know, I come in. No, I, <laughs> it takes so much for us. Oh, my God. To get, and I said the last episode, I came in here. I was rushing. I don't know what I had going on, but I was too busy. Sat down when I saw it, and I said, Kim, you could have gave yourself 30 minutes to put yourself together better. Now stop this. Yeah. Stop this. Right? So well, like, you look nice today. Thank you. I you tried to really nice put today. on something acceptable today. Because you really went in a T-shirt and some leggings last time. But I also <laughs> think it's important, too, as we go through this thing called life, that you do take time for yourself. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, make, and making sure that, you know, you're good. Yes. You know, one of the things that I have, um, you know, someone on set is letting right, Listen, I'm about rang. to say first day on set, first day on set. One of the, um, one of the things I said to myself, like, today when I was coming in, I was just, I'm just fucking tired. You're tired, yeah. I am fucking exhausted. Because mm. the thing about me, 
if you don't know me or you don't work with me on a day to day, I'll keep going. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Life will knock my ass down, and, and I'll just get the fuck up, and I'll keep going. But that's what it's all about. And going, and going. Yeah. But now I'm just like, no, I need to just. You need to stop. Take a reset. I need to go away. I need to be on the blue waters. I need to just hit a hard yeah. reset and take a break to, like, wusa. You know what it, I'm saying? It is. It is. It is. Um, I feel like I feel like that as well. A lot of people just in my immediate circle are feeling the same way. So, you know, I'm a big believer in the universe and all of that other stuff. So I definitely feel like there's some sort of, like, there's a portal opening somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like something's happening. Yeah. Because everyone is kind of going through the motions and feeling like there's just something not right. And then I also think as you age, you're, you're dealing with different things that you never really thought about when you were younger. Like I keep thinking about, damn, like, 20 years ago, I wasn't even thinking about this. But as I watch time fly, I'm like, oh, my gosh. What are you thinking about? Well, I think aging as a, just as a woman um, professionally, like those mm -hmm. are conversations I have a lot. Um, and it's interesting because even when I see things online, we'll get to it. I say, you're not even in that space anymore. Like, and you can't be like the media, hip hop media space, right? Which is what we're doing right here, right now. I feel like I put myself back in it just by sitting here with you and having these conversations. So we're having these conversations and I wonder when I scroll and when I look at stuff, I'm like, are you really there the way that you used to be? Now, I'm very much in the know when it comes to the stories that are out and how we, I think everyone pretty much is. But when I watch the hip hop, I will say, because that's, you know, that's where I come from, media and how they covered things and the game, I was like, thank God I switched my career mm -hmm. into television at mm -hmm. the time that I did mm -hmm. in 2005. I was forced, but I did it. Yeah. What would I be doing if I didn't have that? Because I could not compete on the level that they're competing in in that media landscape. I'm just like, for what I did and my peers back then, mm -hmm. right now, I'm sure you've seen it, they're fighting over lists. They got a list out. Well, complex list. The complex list, which I haven't seen anything else from complex in the last 10 years. No disrespect. I just don't look to complex. Like, it's yeah. not what I'm reading. Again, like the, the, the so consumption of what, of, of, just what's going on. I don't get it from the same brands I got it from when I was at the source. Like, there's no magazine. Like, am I going online? Like, complex.com, who's on the list? That list is like, is it for the general consumer? Is it a point of conversation for people? Is it a slow news week? Like, they fighting over the positions on the list. And let me say something about lists. Since we're going to get into it, I'm going to get into it. It was a heavy week, but okay, time to snap back. Those lists, because they were my specialty when I was at the source 20 years ago when I was doing lists, they really have, there's no basis for them, right? It's just a judgment call. It's blind judgment of whoever's in a position. And really what it is, is for those people who are making the list to go and get cool with the people who they feel like are on top of media so they can one day be in their spot. Because that's it. Because you don't really know who's doing the list. Mm. So even at the source... What we did, right, we did put metrics together and we did have a, a larger team of people back then to be able to vote on these things. And sometimes it got technical, right? Like, let's, let's do a list and let's put the numbers down. And, but really, we just put who the fuck we wanted to put on the list. Yeah. Come on. But that's why that's I always what we stood did. by never so letting it out. a list define who you are it's really who, it's, it's really like you know i understand what you're saying they like fighting where, do over you, it, though. where do you fit in in this yeah. media you know thing that's going <laughs> not on a, i wouldn't i don't care though but that's it's my, like i, I was my like, point my point i'm trying to make is a list doesn't define right what you contribute to that space right or who you are. Especially when it's a list of, you don't read, y'all don't read Complex for nothing else. Stop it. 
Like, just stop it if that's what you're doing. Now, all of a sudden, everybody want to talk about the list because they on it. That's the whole point. They're like, what are we going to do? Nobody's reading it. Oh, let's do a list of the media people so they could all talk about our list. But really, when's the last time you talked about anything on Complex? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> like, you talk, but now we're talking about the list. Yeah. But I don't think what, there's this anything. This is what they do it for. I don't think there's anything wrong with constru- constructive criticism. Right. I feel like, you know, Elliot took what Charlemagne said personally. Okay. And when I looked objectively okay. to what he was saying, I kind of looked at it as a constructive criticism take because there is parts of you that undeniably have to grow up in media. Right. I say that to say you know, like you transition into television. I'm transitioning into the leadership role. Mm-hmm. One day, I'm not going to be on a radio every right. day. I'm on High 97 every day now, right. but that's not what I aspire to, to do. be right. forever because I do realize that there is a whole new generation Absolutely. behind me that I should be coaching up right, to, to bring take them those into positions. to take those roles. Right. But I think what happens sometimes is that the generation before me feels like they have to gatekeep forever. And there's nothing to gatekeep anymore because of the internet. Right. You can't gatekeep it's this different. shit no more. It's they different. do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. So the point is, if you're going to do something at that bigger wage, don't be provocative in how you do it. But, let, but let's, let's but, back but, up. But, 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 but let me just say... And from his perspective, I see it. He doesn't want, he see what, he saw the people before him. And I guess what he's saying is, I don't want to be them. I don't want to be 50 still trying Who was to saying interview. That? Charlemagne? Charlemagne. Okay. But, 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 but let me finish my thought. I don't want to be 50 still trying to chase something that a 19-year-old should be doing. And to me, I, I felt that that was fair, constructive criticism, criticism. Okay. Because I compared it to Kamala and Biden. Right. Right? Gen Z made it clear that they did not want Biden at the top of the ticket. Right. And when they moved her up, she had 70,000 new voter registrations within one week. Weighs the highest amount of money that the Democrat Party has seen in the campaign. So I say that to say is, like, there's nothing wrong with embracing your age because you have legacy, and nothing can take away your legacy. So, so let's go back. That's my thought. So let's go back, right? Because I want I, we jumped ahead a little bit. I want to go back and say, so there was this list on this brand of hip-hop media, like, professionals and the ranking of where they felt in what order of importance? Was it like the most popular? Like what was the criteria for the list was my point. But anyway, so Elliot came in at number five. I believe Charlemagne came in at number four. Um, Academics was number one. Budden was two. Um, And I don't think I saw a woman on the list at all. But Angie Angie was on there. What what was she? I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but she did make the list. Okay, great. So we have a woman. Great. Like, you know, I always find that odd when it's like all control, like so male dominated. But so they they had this list and then Charlemagne made a comment on his Brilliant Idiots podcast about where Elliot fell on the list. And then what you talked about, you know, just his what you call constructive criticism. Um, Elliot took that, posted it, said, fuck you. And then now it's proceeded to be for the last four months, no, I'm kidding, two weeks, them going back and forth and, like, you know, saying things. It's because Charlemagne says something in response to that, right? I don't think he said anything I thought he did. I thought he, I thought he went on the Brilliant Idiots podcast he, again and No, 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 and, no. I think he said responded. what he said. No, I think it was just one sitting. One time? Yeah, that he said what he said. You know what I mean? And sometimes I think, because if you think about it, Elliot has mentioned him in the past. I remember watching Elliot say something about him on academic show a while ago before right. the list, saying right. something to the effect, I'm, so I'm, just, not, yeah, I'm just not feeling so, him like that. Or something to that effect. But, but, what, but 
damn, I just lost my train of thought because I was a no, I, 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 probably because I was just probably cutting in into because I get Elliot. He Elliot probably get he gets emotional, but that's what makes him who he is in the space today, right? His emotions, the fact that he reacted the way he did, the fact that he came out because I think a lot of people, and I'm not justifying his actions, right? But it is kind of personal when you saying where I should fall on the list. It's personal because we all know these lists are not really, there's no criteria. We don't know what the criteria, show me the numbers or the metrics of how you, it's a popularity contest, right? So it's what they think is good. So if you're going to come out and say, hey, I don't think he should have been five on the list, right? That's a clear, I'm coming for you a little bit. And so the other party has the opportunity to respond the way they want to respond. And what's kept Elliot so high in the rankings, the fact that he is five on the popularity contest, is that he does shit like this. You know what I'm saying? So I see it more so as a media move for him. But because also, if he don't say nothing, he falls lower on the list. I, you got to do that feel, dumb shit. Like they go back and forth, academics, and but, all but day my, they just... But, my whole, but that's my whole point, though. got to do I, it. I think my whole point I'm trying to make here is that you are going to say things because you want him to react and yes, respond to absolutely. you. absolutely. That's the game, though. But, that is the game. That's, that's what the name of the list should be. You know what I'm saying? It should but, be the list let of me ask you this. Let me caddy ask you back this. and forth men. <laughs> but let me ask Top you this. Top five caddy back and forth bullshit. But does it come to a point where, because I watched this Because it's not out. like they, they're not doing stories but, like that. But I watched this play out with 50 Cent and Rick Ross, too. And I said this on my radio show. Does it come a point where it's like, you, you're too old for this? Yes. Yes, but I think that that's what we said at the top of this, right? Like, we're in this where we're talking about things in our lives and we're doing this and this is for... Like, to me, I look at it as, like, what we're doing is for a completely different audience. Because ain't nobody that's going to watch, you know, their streams or what they're talking about wants to hear what we have to say. But there are people who want to hear what we have to say. And it's probably people that grew up, you feel me? Like, and there are our age. I'm not doing this for, like that particular audience i have a lot of things to say and that comes from the experience i have as a woman the experience i have in the you know in my profession right just in life it comes from all of that and i think that that's why it's great what we're doing but that particular i do come from that space Mm -hmm. I, i won't deny that so i can you know i have that in me as well but i couldn't be on a, people ask me for a long time why I didn't podcast. I can't. I can't do that. I can't be like, oh my god, Drake just dropped the record. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't do it online all day. That oh, yo, did you hear? Like, I, I, what are y'all doing all day? But that's the game. That's where the game is. Like that's yeah. what they do. Yeah. That's their business. I don't know what you call it anymore. I guess you call it the media on the media list. I just can't. That's not what I'm. That's not the content I'm consuming. Like, constantly. I consume it because it's entertaining as fuck. So yeah. I love it. I watch it. I, I love a shade room post and funny shit. And I love to dig into the comments and look at stuff. But at a certain point, I got to shut that off. Like, yeah. I can't be engaged in shenanigans all day. Yeah. That's all it is. And that's, that's what their business is. And that's what the business of hip-hop media has become. Yeah. It's the business of hip-hop shenanigans. Yeah. Like, it's the, it really is. It's, it's a and shame, I, and, but, you know. And I'm, I also think that, too, you know, people jump out the window and say things about you when they feel like, they should have had the success you've had, if not more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Like, you can't deny that the Breakfast Club have built something special. Absolutely. And outside of that, Charlemagne has built something successful. Mm-hmm. You cannot deny that. I would never. You cannot right. deny that. Right. And sometimes I feel like in the media space, they sometimes say things or throw darts at him because they feel like I've been doing this longer Mm -hmm. and in their mind better than he has. Mm -hmm. Why haven't I surpassed him? Well, and I'm not just saying that about him in particular because, you know, 
you know that you know I, obviously I work for Hot. He works right, for right, Hot. Right, I don't, right. I don't care about. I never in my entire radio m- music industry career have cared about being in competition with someone because at the end of the day, we don't own these radio right. stations. So I never got caught up in like station right, 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 right. And, you know all of that. I don't own it. My name is not on it. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. when they're ready to fire me, they will. You know, but. I, I'm not just saying that particularly about him. I'm just saying in general, when we talk in our last episode about Cardi B, you know, a lot of the hate comes from the fact that people feel like I've been doing it longer than her and and better than her. How come she has had this amount of success and not me? And then that turns into hate and bitter. So let me mention her name so that I can get attention on myself. Right. And the reality is you're just hating. In a way, because I think it depends on what your goals are. Like when I look at Charlemagne, I think Charlemagne, one of the things he's mastered is the pivot, yeah. right? So before something is up, he's like, "I'm gonna go in this lane. I'm gonna go in that lane. Like I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a book. I'm gonna do a podcast network. I'm gonna do, you know, so he television, whatever it is, he sort of or mastered he, getting himself into different spaces to grow. But I'm a challenge. As you. I'm a challenge a pro, you on as it. a media person, a personality. Is he pivoting or is he showing us what it could be coming from black media, a black media personality? Right. Think about it. Think about a black and brown media personalities. How many of us have gotten to the game and had that level of success? Wendy Williams was right on the cuff of being that for us in her generation. Mm -hmm. From someone who came from a microphone, a radio girl. I'm a radio girl, so I can talk about this. Right. Wendy was on the cuff of showing us what this shit could Could be. be. I feel like he is showing us in real time what this shit could be for us. Yeah, I get that. And that, to me, is is inspiring because I come from that. But it's growth, right? It's It's also growth. It's it's seeing yourself in a bigger position as you grow. And when we think about our radio heads, when I think about Russ Parr, who has a nationally syndicated Mm -hmm. morning show in DC for many, many years, what he's been able to do in film and all the other things that he's been able to do, I don't think he gets enough credit Mm -hmm. for the path he paid for a lot of black Mm -hmm. media coming from urban radio, media, radio people. I look at Steve Harvey and I say, okay, well, Steve came from comedy. He came from that. Then he came... To radio, but when you look at our white counterparts like Ryan Seacrest, Elvis Duran, all right. of these people, they they get those looks, they get those looks. We don't oftentimes don't get those big looks. But I also think I think we're talking about two different things because here, you're speaking from a radio perspective, right? And when we look at what Charlemagne does and what Elliot does. And where they came from. They really came from two different forms of like media that now have merged. So now it's the same thing. But 20 years ago, or even 20, 25, I don't know how long everybody's been in the game, it was they had separate functions, right? But the, you know, with the advancement of technology and where we came. Even, even in a space of social media, right? Because that probably is the most influential broadcast um, platform that we follow, all of us, right? Mm-hmm. Like, people aren't listening to radio the way they used to. Lord knows nobody's reading a magazine, right? Mm-hmm. But everyone's on social media. Yeah. So those two roles have now merged into this different role. And it's very personality-driven, and it's, you know, the radio personalities, they have that advantage, right? Because you're used to being on the radio. You know, it's different. The journalist is used to being behind the computer, right? And doing more research and doing more long form. So there is sort of like this, this gap of like experience in the media space for social media. Because now it's this, right? Like this is how you do it. 
but we've lost that other art of where I think he could, Elliot can be more um, influential is by adding more of that into what he does. So if he were more informative, right? I, because I think he's trying with the podcast. Probably. I got I to gotta watch it, you know. Elliot, I've known for years. Charlemagne, I've known for years. I respect both of them and what they've done in the yeah. game, right? I got to watch it to see. But I, if he I, I never added forget, that. I never forget I cornered Elliot one time at a future album release party. And I said to him, I said, you know, you guys paved the way for, for women like me. But I never really highlight women in the media space. I never really, like, mm-hmm. give us the crowns for what we've done in the media what space. What say? He, I think he said something to the... I was kind of tipsy. That's why I went at him so hard. <laughs> but I did go I hard tell on a him. story and be like, I don't remember what he said. I, was I think tipsy. he said something though, like, you're right, or I'm going to do better, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, y'all don't really give voices to women. Y'all all try to take over, and blah, 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 blah. And I was, I was definitely on the mo. So, um, well, you know, you know, every time I talk to someone about this, they're like, oh, you mean the woman who complained podcast? Oh, so it's complaining because it's coming from us. I don't know if our voices, the pitch of our voice is higher and it, it reads more like complaining, but they're doing the same thing, yeah. right? They're venting and they're, they're not, you know, really um, and too different from And if that's all they get from this podcast, that's very sexist as hell. It's very sexist, but that's, you know, listen, I go on a podcast and they ask me, you know, about somebody I might have been fucking 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Somebody else goes on a podcast and they're like kikiing about it. So, like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking I about. I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you know who I'm talking about when you're doing interviews with certain people and you're not asking them a bunch of questions, but you're digging into my past from 20 years ago. Come on. Yeah. It's Come in, on. It's, in, it's fucking insane. Ask the questions. If you're going to do that to me... Ask the questions. When you get a big interview with somebody, ask the right questions. But the favors that are, you know, if, if, if we get a Joe Budden on here, right, it's like, oh, you know, podcast for podcast. Like, yo, that's the biggest podcast out there. They promote our podcast. But you're not going to ask him the questions that you should be asking him. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think journalists that have our background can get ahead, right? Because an Elliot... Right. Shouldn't be in it for the like the shock value of what a Charlemagne does. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you get somebody on your podcast, then ask them the questions that everybody else is scared to ask because they're too busy about wanting to promote their own podcast on the other person's platform. So that's all they're doing. All the podcasters are going on each other's platforms. Right. So that they can promote and bigger, like get their own platform up. Journalists can win by doing different things. Don't worry about, you know, getting this person button and the whole, you know, the, the whole button and gang on your podcast just to promote. Like, do Ask a real questions. interview. Yeah. Like, do a real interview. And I like when media personalities evolve over time. You know what I mean? When I look at how Angie has evolved in her interview style in real life, when I look how even Charlemagne has evolved, where folks used to think of him as just being the shot guy, right. he has evolved so much. When he does much. the interviews, yeah. And his interviews and his intellect and, like, and, and again, you just got to give the props where they're, where they're just due. I mean, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And I know those two work for, you know, my competition stations, but, you know, yeah. Angie has done a great job at just evolving over time and he has too you know what I mean you cannot stay the same but I think Elliot has evolved as well right by even being in that space now I you know I'm not saying he hasn't I'm not saying he right but I there are points of that conversation where Charlemagne was talking about you know if you're this old like I there I do have feelings about that as well like I do feel like sometimes we grow out of that space so I get what he's saying but I feel like, you know, Elliot has been able to probably the longest sustain in that space. So that's a testament for him as well. Because yeah. the rest of us are out. Yeah. We like, uh, we're good on that. Yeah, you know? but that's by choice. Yes, that's by, by choice. choice. By cho- but not, maybe not everybody, because some people are still trying to do it and it doesn't, you know, it's not work. translating. It doesn't work for them. Yeah. Speaking of big interviews, I love the fact that Oprah and Gail sat down recently. I did like that. 
to do an interview and they talked about the rumors over the years of them to of them being gay. Be I in, love that in a lesbian <laughs> relationship. I loved that. And she, you know, tackled tackled it so well, in my yeah. opinion. She said, and if we were, we wouldn't hide it. Right. You know no, what I, I mean? Loved it. But I think that's the first time they ever they addressed it. They ever spoke it. about it. Yeah, I loved it. Because people have been saying that for years, and they just kind of never addressed it. Because I can understand why. It's just stupid. Why would I address something that's so stupid? Right. But then I, you know, I like the way she flipped it, too, on some like, damn, like, y'all act like women can't be friends like that, you know, the way that they are. And that's kind of true, too. Why did those rumors even exist. start just because of the way they had each other's back? Right, and that's what true friendship yeah. is. It's crazy. True friendship is having each other's back like that. Yeah. And I love that relationship. I Like, me and my best friend, we have a relationship like that. Right. Where I feel she's the only person on the planet who does not judge me. Mm. The good, the bad, the ugly, ever since we were, like, 20 years old, running around New York City, no matter who I dated, no matter what decisions I made in life, she rolled out. The good, the bad, the ugly. Right. Never judged me. Might have said, girl, I don't know. Right. I don't know about that. But if that's what you want to do, I'm a ride to the right. wheels fall off. And those are the relationships that stand the test of time. When you feel so safe with someone. Yes. That you can 100% be yourself. Yeah. Even when you're not your best self. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I mean, at this age, I feel like just my friends have been my strength. Right. Like they're the ones who are there when I'm going through something. I call them and I always tell my friends, if I'm calling you, I'm good. Yeah. If I'm not calling you, then check on me. But if you hear me and I sound distressed and I got like all this shit going on, complaining, I'm hurt, whatever it is, as long as I'm calling you, I'm good because I'm calling you because I know you're going to pick me up out of that space. If I'm not calling you, then that is when I'm in trouble. And that's why if I don't hear from my friends, I get worried. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Is this person okay? But I feel like that has been that support group that I have. And I think as I've gotten older, I've really found that in mostly women yeah. and gay men, I will have to say that. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. mostly women who have been the company that I keep and, you know, Ha, you know, share like-minded ideas with. Yeah. So it's different. It's almost like a. I don't know if it's I, hard. I don't know if my husband would be acceptable to that type of relationship with a man. Oh, okay. So we're transitioning into this part of the podcast. No, I'm just saying. No, no, no listen, I'm because saying, this is good. I'm just saying because think about it. He wouldn't. I'm, I, I would mean, not. What, what man would? I would not be acceptable for him either. What man would? Like, but think about it. Like to be that intimate with a friend, that means you have to be extremely vulnerable. Vulnerable, right. With, with no right. walls. Right. My husband... If he was to have that type of relationship with a woman, I don't care if it's friend or not, I would not be okay with that. I get it. Because I fact, was married and I, I felt the same way. Yeah. Now, when I find my second husband, because, you know, like, I know uh, some of my friends are on number three. I'm like, what's really happening with me here? But I will never do that again. I'll say that. I will never sacrifice my relationships with men or women for that person and that's just a learning experience but what right what do you mean by that i mean that i have male friends that are also a part of my support system maybe not in the same way my you know my girls are but i have a lot of male friends before i got married i had a lot of male friends and i cut everybody off in my marriage but and i, don't I didn't wanna, have male friends but i don't and wanna. then when i got divorced i had no male friends and i needed some male friends so I had to find my male friends again. So if I, and it's not about, like, I would respect my husband. Like, I'm not going to, one, you're never going to be in a room and I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable, you know, on some, what was the, <laughs> I know it wasn't real because they cut some of it out, but what was the Megan Good hug with uh, Michael Ely? Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm never going to make, you know, my significant other feel like that, right? You're not going to be hugging me, like, and I'm jumping on you, legs around, like, I'm not going to do that. But... You know, there's a mutual respect. I have male friends, and I'm going to hang out with my male friends. But I'm not talking about that. That I think that is okay. What I'm talking about is that deep, intimate relationship 
that I have with my best friend, Janta, mm-hmm. I would not be okay if he gave that to a woman and nor do I want to give that type of intimacy for a man outside of my husband. Understood. Because I want to feel that there is, that you are the safest person Place that I, I could, can go. Yeah. That there is no walls, there is no boundaries. And let me tell you something. That has not always been the case, even in marriage. Mm. I think we had to go through some valleys mm. to get to that space mm-hmm. where I feel safe mm. enough to be that person with him because of the past trauma that I have been through in life. Wow. It made me very closed off to having that deep connection with men. And I think, you know, not having a father in my life played right. a big role in that as well. But when I kind of went through a lot of therapy and, you know, dealt with a lot of our issues, Mm -hmm. I think we moved more into that space. I still feel like we have some growing to do. Right. And some trust that has to come with that. But I know that I don't want that with anybody else but him. Right. And and I want to still have my girlfriends because girls talk about things. Of course. Of course. And I think when you say... Deep, intimate love. I get it, of course. Like, that's not, I mean, come on, what are you really doing, right? Like, yeah. if you're having, like, deep, like, if you're married and you're having, like, a deep, intimate relationship like that. That's not really what I mean. Because I didn't think, I don't think even going into my marriage I had, like, those type of relationships. But I have male friends. Now, I will say this. They would call me all times of the, the night, right? Some of them. I'm not... I don't know if some of them were trying to do anything else, but I'm just saying they were just friends, and I stopped that, right? I stopped that when I I got in a relationship because that's what you do. You should have. Yeah, like you respect. Going into another relationship for me, I'm not going to – listen, I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to turn my phone off, but I'm not going to tell people, don't call me after 8 because I'm with my man. No, fuck no. Yo, yo, I, ain't, I I tried to call you last night. Oh, sorry, I had my phone off. Like, it's different. It's different like, now. It's I don't different. know about me, but I feel like men, if they have that type of relationship with women that I'm talking about that deep, intimate type vibe, right. they're fucking them. They're fucking them. They're fucking them. They're try- Sometimes they're just trying to fuck. Oh, they're trying to fuck. <laughs> they're fucking them. Sometimes they're just they're trying to fuck. Just like if you're... You know, here's what I say. Here's what I say. Those relationships just with no, women no, no. They're trying. Fucking. They're trying. They're trying. Right. But like, like it's two guys in a room, you're fucking them, right? Uh, yeah, y'all don't want to answer because you know you're fucking them. <laughs> I do believe, right? Like I have some friends that I've had for over 20 years, and we're really close. Now we respect each other's boundaries, right? But we have deep conversations. I don't think all of them, maybe one or two, but I don't think they're trying to fuck. No, that's not the intimacy I'm talking about here. What type of intimacy? That's I'm what I say you have to define intimacy. The intimacy. Like you on the phone like at night, like what's up with you? No, the intimacy where you have that's no different. walls, no barriers, the most honest and secure place you can possibly go. Think about it. Well, yeah, I don't have to answer it today, but think about it. Okay. That's a different level of intimacy. That's That's what I'm talking about. And I only want that type of intimacy with your husband. With my husband. Right. And I have male friends who I've been friends with for years. They're like bros, homies, but I'm not giving that part of myself to them. Of course not. But as women, we're. We're very nurturing. I think women are loyal. Like, I don't look at women as, like, usually, like, when you're with someone, you are with that person, and it's very hard to, like, share yourself with other people, right? Like, even if, like, you're maybe dating more than one person, women are not like that. Men do that, right? Like, men will be in a relationship, and they will... Fuck another scroll, bitch. Well, but yeah, they'll do that. But they will scroll and like photos just to see... Like, like sexy pictures just to see which, you know, just to, when you like in somebody's photo, let me tell you this, I've seen this online too. When you like in someone's photo and it's a sexy photo and you don't know that person, you're liking it to say, I like you. Do you see me? 
do you see my like? Yes. Because if you're a man, and I agree. You're, yeah, if you're a man and you're liking and emojiing, like that's a to me, it's a very feminine quality. It's an attention because seeker. Look at me. You're I'm looking over here. You want the girl attention. to see you, right? Because yep. you can't tell me. You can't tell me. Hey, you know, yeah. I like the way she look. Her body, I, she look good. You can't say that if you liked it. You liked it because you want her to see you. Please see me. Please see maybe me. Maybe there's a can chance you a wave that back? I can fuck, fuck you. And here's the thing. Tonight. Right. Now, there's some women that go for that, right? The worst thing you could do, I always say this, the worst thing you could do is DM me. The worst thing you could do, and listen, I ain't popping like that anymore, maybe 20 years ago, but ain't nobody DM me. It ain't crazy like that. But occasionally, I get the DMs where people are like, you know, hard eyes or whatever. Oh, I'm going to marry you. And I'm like, this the worst thing for me at my age like for you to come at me like that because then that means duh that's what you do and I don't want to be entertaining someone who does that because that's corny to me first come at me with a check because that's gonna open up communication no nah, Kim you're not no I'm dead fair. serious I'm dead serious you want the communication with me and you don't know me and you don't know me this ain't gonna do it nah Come at me with a check, and now I'm going to have a conversation with you. Right? Now I'm talking to you because well, I'm getting paid. What kind of check are they going to say? I got a job offer for you tomorrow? I have gotten checks through social media. Opportunities. Now, think about it, right? This is strategy here. Now I'm giving it away, so now you can't even do it. But the strategy is let me get to know her, right? But I'm not going to go for get to know me off of you sending a fire emoji or first of all please don't emoji me if you a dude like please it's just very feminine to me <laughs> it's just very feminine so like you're gonna come at me with a conversation that I want to be in right so an opportunity or a check is something that I will entertain so now <laughs> I know you now you're on my radar right because you put money in my but pocket. Not, but not all guys not all guys have the opportunity. But don't do it on social then. Like, I just, I'm trying to, like, really figure out, like, don't do it on social. Because, like, really, the social media of it all is such a turn off to me. Like, and it's, it's, it stresses me but, out. When I've, been, when I've been in situations and I see the way people behave on social, I am very stressed out by it. I'm like... Is this the same person that I was just with? I'm like, is this the same person? But like, there really be you're chicks thirsting for on IG, but there be That's chicks for, really... them for that. No, I know. I, listen, I can't say anything to those chicks because I'm having a conversation with someone one day, and then the next day, I'm like, oh my god, he just he's all over social looking for attention from other women. Yeah, that's that's a to me, it's a feminine quality, but it's also immature do you know what i'm saying but it also reeks insecurity right it also reeks right insecurity and you're trying to fill a void right in some part of brokenness in you that you feel the need to always right seek this attention, attention. and validation absolutely. from women absolutely and to be honest women have to understand that he's just seeking your attention he's not going to wife you He's not going to give you the life you think you're going to have. He's going to fuck you and send you on your merry way. For the most part. Especially if they're in a relationship with right. someone. What do you think they're going to do? They just need, you're just there to fill a void. And that's just the hard truth. Mm -hmm. Speaking of hard decisions, Kamala Harris has now been endorsed by Joe Biden. He stepped down. Mm -hmm. He's not going to run in this election. She raised so much money since announcing that she's going to run in November. She also registered 70,000 new voters in, like, a couple of days. Right. So Gen Z seemed to be right. really excited about right. her. Um, but I also see a lot of things online that makes me just want to throw up. Number one is the idea that she sent all these black men to prison. And I'm like, first of all, right, that right. was a lot. a lot. Misinformation a lot. that was created mm -hmm. by the 
right wing media when she was running the first time right. and people just kept going with that narrative but if you really break down the facts and you look at her record then you will see that that's just not true right but people you know they have that ingrained in their head then i look at artists like sway lee who jumps out the window and says these things about her and it's like trump is telling you in real time what type of democracy you're going to have. Right. I don't understand it. When right. I look at Amber Rose and what she right. says and how she continues to spread misinformation about she incarcerated all of these black men and da 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 But the most, the most craziest part of all of this is Trump literally saying in one of his campaign speeches when he was speaking to the Christians that don't worry about you know, voting ever again after this election because I'm going to fix that. I was like... TT, we skipped... We skipped this man getting shot at. <laughs> like, and I just can't even have the conversation without discussing the fact that... I know it happened last week, right? But I feel like we should have been here the day after because... The the many men of it all, the fifty cent, the the uh, the, the spectacle memes. of what that was. I'm like, how can we even go that route? Like to but me, it's I'm like feeling the disrespect, like, but it's like the disrespect to the even, office, right? Because if a former president got assassinated or attempted assassination on his life, there would that is not a laughing matter, but the spectacle right. that we have now turned our democracy into, into it's like you can't even take the fact that this guy has been shot at seriously right because of all the rhetoric and then not to mention he goes out and say oh um i think the assassination made me worse you right. know after saying he was going to bring everybody together this situation where we are in American politics is crazy to me. Right. The shooting was where I felt like. But let me ask you. There this. was so much there that just we didn't get a chance to talk about. I guess it's old news now, but this man got shot at and then took a picture with his fist in the air, like the black power fist. And I thought it was the craziest thing. I had seen. I was like, and then like the controversy behind it was it a bullet or was it glass from the teleprompter? But then the whole badge I, on his the, ear the, at I, the RNC I, convention. I was like the the press, the reality show that is his campaign to me speaks so much louder than anything else in politics. And I cannot believe he is running again and there's actually um because like, people uh, believe it. People I, believe like that rhetoric. People are, I cannot believe that. I cannot. I, I'm like, do this you is believe, insane. Do you believe that Kamala has a shot at really winning this thing? I do. I do. Yeah. You know what? And I I, it wasn't easy for me to come to that because I'm just kind of like, you know, I always have these doubts about this country. and But, but then I, I remember when Obama ran... I had doubts, and I was like, damn, it'd be great if he can win, but can he really win? And then he won, and it was like, oh, my God. So I am faithful in this election that she has. And she I mean, has in, in her campaign. Right? Yeah. She's uh, been I mean, vice president for I mean, I, I, three to years. To me, there's no comp – when we talk about politics and, and like, just who is – um, the most qualified more for qualified job. for the – I mean, to me, it's like it, there's no comparison. There's just no comparison, right? It's like – but – Again, the same way I talk about us on social media and like what we're consumed with as an audience, it's the same thing in politics. It's like people are watching a reality show and they're going towards that. Like, to, I, it was, I, listen, you know, because when it first happened, I was like, this was set up. I thought it was a whole scandal. I said, this is, looks crazy to me. Crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. But I saw some people say, um, 
oh, this country wasn't ready for a woman. When right, 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 right. So what do you think this country is going to be for a black woman? And I saw a lot of women of color saying this. And my response to that was, I wish I would stop talking like that. Were they at Amber your, Rose's slut walk? No, but just because I'm see just yourself. trying to figure out where they. But come I just from. want us to see ourselves right. bigger right. than what the what ifs say. Right. See yourself bigger than that. Right. Because we can make the difference. Women can really lead. We can make the difference. If you want to get something done, nine times out of ten. A strong ass lady. <laughs> you already you know. The finish line. You already know, but I think it's just what we're dealing with. So I feel like I'm gonna pray on it. Well, I'm I gonna pray on to it. Register to vote, please do. And I want you guys to turn up in November because honestly, everything that this man is saying on the campaign trail, believe him. Yes. All of this police immunity. Sonya Massey just got shot and killed. Mm. Gunshot to the, the head. The, the, I feel like there's so much that we haven't been able to talk about. So, like, even when the mention of Sonya Massey, right? Like, I, I have so much to say on that. We should save that for next time. I have so much to say on how horrible that was, on where we are in 2024, the fact that that could happen. Like, it was so obvious that... She was just, she was ducking. Like, they, she, they, she was she, ducking and shot her in the eye. Sorry. I cannot, but like, that video is so traumatizing. And it's just like, this man was actually given a job in the police force. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's getting deeper into like the problems. Like, why was he not even, even there? Why, in the first right. Place? Why, why was he is an this officer the, with a badge? Who why? gave him a job? Like, all this stuff that's coming out now, I can't. We got to talk about it next time. But I say that to say is when you give police immunity, right. you're just basically giving them permission to run wild. Right. No accountability. When you stack the Supreme Court and you say that the president is above the law, you basically saying that the yeah, president is insane. above the law is insane because where is the accountability? No one should be above the law. We all need to be held accountable for the, mis the things that we do. And when we abuse power or we do something that is not legal, we should be held responsible for right. that. Because we would. Regular folks Absolutely. would. Absolutely. So on that note, we are going to save that for yes, our next episode. So make sure you guys plug in the trigger warning where you can get your podcast. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page. Our YouTube numbers are doing extremely well. Oh. They love us New on slash YouTube. Newsflash. Ow. Let me so check it out. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Mine is TT Torres. Mine is Kimmo. What was mine? Kim well, she Osorio. don't know, but don't, I don't worry. I don't my YouTube. I'm getting together. I swear I'm going to get it together, y'all. I think it's Kim Osorio Media. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. So our our show is doing very well on YouTube. So they're they're catching on. And, and we, we ain't even doing nothing yet. Wait till we start promoting. But thank you guys. Thank you. For real. For, Trigger for warning. Pow, 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 pow. All right. So we're out. Bye, guys. Later, y'all.